percent use um so we are now live so hello everyone thank you for joining us today at uh your abc's home event you may uh have been with us earlier today to watch the webinar of the attacks essentials of movement and to Greece. But those of you who missed it, I will introduce myself again. So my name is Ryan Timms and I'm a marketing manager here at Your Overseas Home. For this session, I'm joined by Harry, who's representing Property Chambers um, and sharing his insight into the webinar titled How to Buy a Property in Greece and the process um, that surrounds that. So it's great to have many of you, uh, as many of you, it's great to have so many of you here with us today, whether you're watching live or on demand. This event is designed to support overseas buyers, provide guidance and give you the opportunity to get your burning questions answered. So once has Harry has shared it, his presentation, there will be an open floor to questions. If you have um, any as we go along, please type your questions in the Q&A area below and I can ask them on your behalf. So we hope to answer as many questions as we can today, but if we don't get around to answering all of them, please don't worry. Harry and his team will be available on their booth within the exhibition hall. So please reach out to them if you have any more questions you have. So all of our exhibitors here today all have a wealth of information, documents and videos. You can download them from your booths. Um, so please um, go ahead and visit them at their, uh, in the exhibition hall. So that's enough from me. So let's hear from our um, expert, Harry. Um, and if you'd like to introduce yourself and we'll get the presentation up. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for that introduction. So my name's Harry Angelides. Um, I'm a barrister in the UK and uh, actually a New York attorney as well. Um, and I spend a lot of time in Greece um i i have a practice in greece and i have a practice in the uk and um uh because people were interested in buying greece from britain after brexit um i we founded um the property chambers um which helps give advice um and legal services for people wanting to buy in greece and obtain resident visas for themselves and their family. So um, how do you go about buying in Greece? If, I mean, the buying process is uh, similar to the UK. You have to find a property, get an offer and accepted. Um, and um, then you could do a survey of the property and, um, and you manage to um, complete the transaction. There are some steps um, to get there. The first and the most important step is actually to get yourself uh, a Greek tax number, which is like a UK social security number or a, or a, or a tax number, you know, a, a UK tax number. Um, it's without this tax number, you can't do business in Greece. It's, um, it's, you can't, for example, get a, a contract to have a mobile phone without the tax number. Um, together with the tax number, what is also absolutely necessary is to have a Greek bank account. So let's call it uh, the infrastructure. So to be able to do business in Greece, you have to have a Greek tax number and a Greek bank account. So that's the first step. Um, it's a. It's actually that first step is is a bit of a lengthy process. It takes a, about two, three months to get your uh, tax number and your bank account. First, we have to get the tax number. Once we have the tax number, we get the we can apply for the bank account. But before the tax number, we also need a power of attorney where you um, you give us a power to act on your behalf and make the application to the Greek tax authorities for your tax number. And once that's received, make an application to the bank on your behalf. Once the, once the bank opens the account, you get your uh, bank codes, which are secret to yourself and your cards, and you have internet banking. And we generally open accounts at a major Greek bank. There's about two, three 
big banks where they have branches everywhere and we open in one of those three banks for you um that's the infrastructure and it's fundamentally important and if you go and try and buy a property without having this you will then have uh, to explain to the seller that you have to delay two three months in order to get that process so we recommend and advise everyone that the first step you need to get that done um, and then you're free to buy then you're in a position to to look and make offers um, a lot of people are not aware of that so they come to Greece <clears throat> on a visit go and find a property and then find themselves um, with a delayed process and, with the, and the sellers are not very happy because <clears throat> They want to expedite a sale. So if you have that, then we move on to the actual uh, buying process. So you, lo you locate the property where you want, you make an offer, your offer is accepted. And then we what is required to be done is a pre-sales contract. It's similar to a, like an exchange contract. It's not necessarily 10%, but it's... Um, normally between five and ten thousand and this contract says if in the investigations we find that there is a problem either legally with the title deeds or once an engineer inspects a property finds that the property doesn't match what is built on the title deeds or it doesn't meet building regulations uh, so we investigate all these issues so you get good, clean, safe title. And that is important because if there's a defective title or the property has been built without building regulations, and unfortunately, people in Greece are a little bit uh, uh, liberal, if I can say that, uh, with uh, meeting the requirements. So if they have permission to build 100, they could build 120 square meters. Um, and we recently had a case where um, a garage attached to a house uh, in an investigation we found that that was 10 square meters greater and that deal didn't go through because of that um, our buyers fortunately found something out afterwards but that's that's the sort of thing that we're looking for when we, we're carrying out an investigation. So you can have good title, and then when you come to sell, you can pass on good title and it's not defective and everything is everything is in order. Um, and that's our, um, you know, that's where we stand um, to serve you, to make sure that you have a safe and secure and, and commercially tradable uh, uh, title. Um, so once to actually do the purchase, um, you will have to transfer your money into your new Greek bank account. And, and then the money that is in the bank account goes directly to the seller. It doesn't come via the lawyers like it, it does in the UK. Um, and it's either done by a banker's draft, so we give the banker's draft and we get the title deeds, or um, or it's done by electronic transfer. Normally, we do it by banker's draft. It's just, you know, it's a bit more antiquated, but you 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 do the exchange of money and title deeds at the same time. So once you've bought the property, we then go on to register the title um, with the what is equivalent to a Greek, the Greek tax registry. Um, there are some costs which are similar to costs in the UK. So if you buy a property, there is uh, something similar to stamp duty. There is, uh, there's land registration fees. The, uh, all purchases are done via a notary. So a notary signs the contract and they charge a percentage. You need, normally there's an estate agent, they charge a percentage. Um, and all this, you need to budget around seven or eight percent of your purchase price for all what we call the soft costs, which are all these costs, including your legal fees and so on. So around seven, eight percent of your purchase price. It's actually much cheaper than the UK. The stamp duty in the UK is much higher here. It's around three, 
0.09%. So um, um, you get a saving in terms of comparison with the UK. Um, and so you need to have your purchase price plus your soft costs uh, before, you, before you buy. Um, every Once you've bought, every year you have to make a tax return. Uh, because there is something similar to it, what is what is account what is council tax in the UK is called enfia here in Greece, and the enfia unfortunately is paid via a tax return. It's not like a, a council tax that comes from the council in the UK. Here it's done via a tax return, and if you rent out the property, so for example, if you do Airbnb with the property, you'd have to again account for that income um, to the Greek government. Um, I, I, I understand you had a, a tax seminar before, so I won't dwell too much on the tax. But um, as long, generally, as long as you don't have income in Greece. You you know you don't um, you don't pay income on your income tax on your earnings coming from somewhere else. Um, so buying a property is a prerequisite to getting a golden visa. So I'll I'll move on to talking about the golden visa now. Um, the minimum price you need to buy to obtain a golden visa is 250,000. And I'm sure you've heard that the Greek government has been thinking of changing this to increase the price to half a million, which is true. They have been, there's been uh, announcements and conversations um, about this. However, the half a million um, will be only in the Athens area, and certain uh, islands, which are uh, Mykonos and Santorini, um, and a couple of other more expensive islands, um, which generally our customers, our British customers, don't go for those those places. Um, and so if you buy a property, for example, in Crete or Corfu or anywhere else, then the normal 250 arises. However, none of these changes have yet to transpire as we're we're waiting for elections in May and June in, in Greece and they're full elections and this is being put on hold. So currently the old rules apply. So it's, it's 250 everywhere in Greece. Um, there, you don't actually once you don't actually need to live in the UK in in Greece or, or spend any minimum period of time for the golden visa, um, and the property can be rented out um, either long term or short term Airbnb type. Um, so we need to prove to the Greek government that you have. Um, place 250,000 in your Greek bank account and use those cleared funds um, to buy a property. Um, if, you, if you obtain a loan, uh, there, are, there are some banks now in Greece that will give a loan to buy a property. If you get a, a loan, you still have to input 250,000 a net capital. So you, you um, it can't be um, 200,000 and a 50,000 loan. It has to be 250,000 of your own money and 50,000 loan um, or 100,000 loan. But it must be a minimum amount of 250 in your account. Um, now, getting the golden visa is an application. We, we, we gather an application together. Married couples um, um, make up one application and their children who are under 21 and unmarried um, can be part of the application. And in some cases, also parents um, of the applicants um, can also be uh, uh, be part of the application. So the whole family can apply. Um, however, the, 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 for the couple, they must be married. Um, now, if they're not married or ha or are same-sex couples, uh, what we do is do what is called a civil partnership agreement between them, and this is like being getting married in Greece, but it's just a document which is signed in front of a notary, 
and that gets over this marriage requirement. Um, otherwise, if it's two persons who are unmarried without a civil partnership, then they need to obtain uh, to buy a property which is at least half a million. So they have two hundred and fifty each. To get around that, the two hundred and fifty thousand each, they have to be married or have a civil partnership. But we can arrange that. Um, the process once we start is about two months. Um, you can actually add a number of properties to come up to the 250. So you could, in theory, buy five properties at 50,000 or two properties at 125 each um, or any combination of any of, of all this. Uh, you can also include a building contract so you could buy a property for 150,000 have a building contract for 100,000 where you come up to the 250 and you you're allowed the golden visa that way around as well it can be the property doesn't have to be a flat or a house it can be a shop it can be a commercial property it can be a bed and breakfast it can be a restaurant um, these all qualify for golden visa. So you don't have to buy a traditional house or a flat. It can be some form of commercial pro property or some combination of the two. Um, the golden visas proved really popular in Greece. Um, there's people from all over the world, um, from many countries, Asia, um, Arabic countries, and there's a currently a building boom going on in Athens uh, because of this, and and um, blocks of flats are going up all the time. Um, when you're driving around um, the south part of Athens, which is near the sea where I where I live, um, almost every building plot is being worked on. Um, so that's um, that's the first slide. So if we could kindly move up to the the next slide. Um, I'd appreciate that. Yeah. So um, the main requirements, here you are. So you must be a non-EU or a non-Swiss national. So if you have, for example, Irish passport, you don't need a golden visa because you're, you're or, or some other country like Holland, for example, uh, Dutch. Um, if, you're, if you've got any European passport or nationality, you don't need a golden visa. You could come here and buy without the golden visa. You must be 18 plus. Uh, um, you must not have any serious convictions. Uh, you mustn't be a politically exposed person, which that's the why it says security risk you need medical insurance you need to prove that you can get medical insurance and we've been very successful at that medical insurance in greece is much cheaper um than in in uh, the uk and you know there's uh, various insurances depending on how um what what you you know what you're buying in terms of insurance but generally it's it's an economic um so there's an economic it's not very expensive in other words um you, you need to come to greece a few times to get this process to be realistic the first thing is that you need to sign the power of attorney before we can do anything for you and the power of attorney needs to be signed in front of uh a notary, a Greek notary. And the only Greek notaries in England are uh, at the embassy. And I'm afraid the embassy, the Greek embassy in England is very slow in giving appointments. We've known people to take a couple of months. So we advise our clients, jump on an airplane, come over here to Athens where we're based, come to our offices, sign in front, of, uh, uh, sign the power of attorney um, in front of a notary, and we can get on with the work. Once the bank account is at the point of being open the bank wants to see you so you have to fly back and see the um and meet with the bank um and then they give you your codes and so on um uh, and and obviously you will need to come to find a property so you, you actually need to see the property uh to buy it before you buy it uh, i always re recommend that it's uh, pictures and videos don't really give you the same feeling and understanding of the property in the area so I always advise people to come so you the, so you will need a number of trips uh, regular trips to Greece um fortunately there's lots of uh, 
um travel there's lots of uh, flights a day and in the summertime the all the charter flights come on line um so there's lots of choice um you don't actually have to come to athens to sign all this if you want for example to go to crete we can arrange a notary in crete for you to sign it we send them the documents and they sign uh you can sign in front of them um okay next slide Yes, I, I came across that I, I mentioned this, you must invest a clear 250. Any loans must be over and above the minimum 250. Now, you cannot work in Greece under this program, under the Golden Visa program. However, there is nothing to stop you doing Airbnb. Um, that's not counted as work um, or short term rentals. And also, there's nothing to stop you um, uh, doing remote work on your computer outside Greece. So you could you could work on your computer um, in England uh, whilst being in Greece. The visa, the golden visa itself, lasts uh, five years um, as long as you keep the ownership of the property. Now. There are some alternatives which I'd like to mention uh, from the Golden Visa, uh, which are not on these slides. So at the moment, UK uh, passport holders and citizens can come to Greece on a what is basically a holiday uh, visa. You don't actually get a visa, but you don't need one um, for three months every six months. So basically, you can come for three months, go back for three months, um, come back for three months and go back for three months. Um, so it's six months in a 12 month period, but um, um, three months every six, if that makes sense. So a lot of my clients, they buy a property under the 250,000 mark, um, even 50,000 or 100,000. And they don't intend to spend long periods in Greece. Um, so they can spend three months and some some of my clients say chance would be a fine thing to spend even longer but um and that and that is sufficient for them so if you if you don't need to spend uh more than three months at a time in greece you don't have to buy a property for 250. there there is another there is a third solution which which is you don't need you can stay in Greece for 12 months with another visa um, um, called the Financially Independent Person Visa. It's called the FIP visa. If you can show that you have unearned income of 2,000 euros a month and plus 20% for each for your spouse and each of your children, um, so uh, 2,000 plus 20 percent uh, for you and your spouse what it means by earn unearned income it means um, generally rental income uh, pensions it means uh, dividends and and all cash in the bank um, interest payments and so on so if you can show unearned income so it's not coming from your earnings not coming from your work or your business and you can show that that 2000 plus 20 percent a month you can get a FIP visa which is a two-year visa allowing you to spend two years in Greece uh, renewable at the end of that period if you can show that you've got a continuation of that income okay next slide please Okay, so this this is the process. You appoint uh, us uh, with the power of attorney, which I explained. We open the bank account and the tax numbers. Uh, you you obtain the foreign resident tax code. Uh, once you found the property, we inspect the deeds. Um, you get a civil engineer to look at the check the building is uh, is in compliance with the regulations uh you need a greek account to make tax returns um every year once you've purchased it to pay your taxes i'll make a little parenthesis there you need a, ta a greek tax representative which is different from a greek accountant so if you are a non-greek 
resident, a non-Greek citizen, uh, you must appoint a Greek citizen to be your tax resident. Again, we can supply that service for you. And then uh, there's the closing or the completion. We call it the closing here. Um, and, uh, you, you know, what's the negotiated terms of sale and the purchase contract. And we do the closing, which is handing the money, obtaining the deeds. We then we then submit your application for the golden visa and um, and go through that process. So that's um, that's my presentation. Um, let me know if you have any questions. We're happy to answer. Cool. Thank you very much, Harry. There's some great insight there and um, a well put together presentation, to say the least. Very so um, I've got some questions here. Um, so obviously, okay. there you just you went through the processes. Um, from start to finish so what are the kind of typical fees associated to those processes for buying in, for buying in Greece um well as I mentioned before you you need to there there are a number of fees um that you need to pay um there are a number of government taxes um like a similar to stamp duty which is around three percent you have to pay a notary which is about one percent of the purchase price plus vat vat in greece is 24 percent, so it's quite hefty um there are um engineers fees um normally it depends on on how complicated um and uh, the property is but let's let's say that's about a thousand uh, euros plus VAT um, and there are land registration fees which is again a percentage so altogether you should budget about seven or eight percent of your purchase price um, our fees uh, our legal fees are different from all that um, we charge uh, fixed fees generally and for example for the tax number and the bank account for two persons, we do a fixed fee of 1,750 euros uh, for that part um, um, to get the matter going. Uh, we don't charge VAT because of international uh, tax uh, transaction rules. So you benefit from not having, having that. And we have a fixed fee. So however much work we need to do to make sure you get your tax number and your bank account open, uh, we don't charge you anything extra. Um, there are some notary fees. You have to sign the, the power of attorney in front of a notary. Those are small fees. Um, um usually around 150 euros um all our all our fees are in euros in terms of purchasing the property the the minimum fee um is around uh 4000 euros but it could be more if it's a more complicated transaction if for example there are building contracts um if there are um uh, special circumstances uh, there are uh, there are also other costs in terms of courier fees, photocopying fees, uh, travel. We we need to if it's uh, if it's a, uh, in an island, we need to travel there several times. Uh, so there'll be some travel costs and accommodation costs. Um, so this is how how it's all ma matched up. But generally, you need to budget seven or eight percent of your purchase price, and it should cover most of all this uh all this uh what we call soft costs yeah perfect thank you for that That's a really good detailed explanation so we've actually had one question come in um when do you get citizenship or the pathway well the citizenship you have to actually live in greece for seven years before you can apply for uh greek citizenship however um once you have your your resident visa um you you don't necessarily need um that extra step but but before you can start that process you have to prove that you've lived in the country for seven years so it's it, it takes a bit of time to to get to that point perfect thank you for that um so we've had another question from nicole uh, uh nicola um is it a deposit also required in addition to the pre-sale contract fee well, the pre-sale contract is a is a legal contract, so there's a that's part of the legal fees of negotiating negotiating that. But normally, uh, there's a deposit which is paid 
to the estate agent or the seller, um, normally between around three to five thousand pounds uh, euros, sorry, um, and that um, within the contract, the pre-sales contract, we always put uh, clauses saying that if we find a defect in the property, um, if 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 there's something wrong with the title deeds or something wrong with the uh, construction uh, um, uh, documents and the engineers' reports, we can get the deposit back. Okay. Perfect. So we've had another question come in. We're kind of running out of time, so we can squeeze one more in or two more. We've had, um, yeah, one more come in. So David's asked, how much is the golden visa application? Um, we, char we charge uh, for two persons uh, 2,750 euros uh, for that application. There are fees for the application as well, uh, government fees, um, which uh, I'd need to look up the, the, to, to be certain, but there are fees as well on top of, that's our fee for making the application for you. Perfect. Um, thank you for that, sorry, my... Um... My slides just disappeared. So there you go. So yeah, we've had some really good um, interactions there. And Craig um, uh, has um, had some positive feedback saying he's going to contact you um, after Great. this um, um, seminar. So thank you to everyone involved. Um, so that's all we have time for really for today's session. It's only a half an hour slot. So sorry um, if we can't answer any more questions. So thank you to Harry for sharing your knowledge and uh, with us today. And thank you for all the listeners joining us. Um, the next Very session much. for Greece is at 11.30, uh, which covers uh, what does the property mo uh, market look like in Greece? So do join us for that as you can, if you can. As mentioned uh, earlier, we strongly encourage you visit the speakers um, on their booths while you're at the event today. And yeah, just thank you for everyone for your time and happy property hunting. So thank you very much for that, Harry, and um, have a lovely thank day. Thank you, good luck, and feel free to contact us and uh, um, we'll uh, discuss your particular circumstances. Perfect, thank you very much, Harry. Thanks a lot, thanks for a great presentation. Bye-bye. Thanks.